did that playfully every morning. And he sit there with their head off. Well, no, he's gonna take the head off. Then he get back in his chair, and he and his best girl, Missy, just have a date all day long. He did that every single day, along with watching the news, listening because he couldn't see to what was going on in the world. And I began to see the fear in him. And I saw, like I say, I saw my daddy decline before anybody knew what was going on. So all of those who are like amazed that I'm not grieving, yeah, I am overjoyed because I saw the pain. I saw the suffer before anybody else did. I saw what he tried to hide from me. And what broke me down, what grieved me like no other, was to see my dad reverting and getting ready to transition because that's what our bodies do when they get ready to transition, no matter the age. As they transition, you will revert to childlike behavior. I saw it in my sister. I saw it in my mother because I had to walk them to the gate as well. And when I began to see it in my father, that's when I knew I just had to pray. I had nothing else to do but pray. But as I saw him suffer, and I know I did not want him to suffer, but one thing about it, he fought to the very end. He would not let me see him suffer. He fought to the very end. I wouldn't let him see me cry, and he wouldn't let me see him suffer. And the last morning when I saw him getting on that ambulance, I knew I was not going to see him again. I knew. But he was had his head up high. And he asked me, where in the world I'm going? I said, you're going to the hospital, Daddy. And he just shook his head and said, okay. And I knew, but I just had to continue talking to God, walking with God. Many times people would try to call me. I was by myself, but I wasn't by myself. I was surrounded by my angels. I was surrounded by God, the Holy Spirit. On the morning that my father died, February the 11th, my birthday, I got a strange phone call. It was the wrong number for a girl who's had this number before, but I've had it forever. And the man asked for her. And I said, sir, because I'm just, um, when I say that my soul was beaten, my soul was tired. My soul was tired from fighting. I said, sir, she no longer have this number. He said, well, ma'am, I was calling to pray for her. Would you mind if I pray for you? And this is 6.44 in the morning, a wrong number on my birthday. And I said, sure. He asked me my name. He prayed for me by name for about two minutes. And when he finished praying, he said, Karen, you know nothing is ever done by mistake, right? I said, sir. And he sounded a foreign but young. He sounded Jewish, to be honest with you. And I said, no, it's not. I said, you have no way of knowing this, but today is my birthday, and I'm sitting here waiting for word of my father's passing. I said, first, I didn't want him to pass on my birthday. I said, but I think that would be the greatest birthday present that I could have because I know he would no longer be suffering. And I had the most joy I had told my friend Ebony that I didn't look forward to birthdays because bad things always happen. My mom got very, very sick on my 50th. My hair came out in the sink at a, a salon. I mean, I've, I've, I've never had a good birthday. I've never, ever had a great birthday. But that day after that prayer, I had the most joy in me that I had not had in God knows when. About four o'clock, when the doctor called me and we had formed a bond, I guess, you know, she remembered my birthday and I said, oh, that's sweet of you. And she said, how are you? I said, Ashley, I'm doing great today. I said, I have so much joy in my heart. I say, in fact, the only other thing that could give me any more joy is to know that my dad is no longer suffering. She said, well, happy birthday, Karen. He's no longer suffering. And when I tell you it felt like chains were being broken. 
and the joy that I had that my daddy had given me the best birthday present that I have ever, ever had. And I will never, ever forget. February 11th, 2021, my 56th birthday. And the best birthday present of all that God gave me is the peace that I have that nobody can even understand because they can't understand why I'm not sad. I can't be sad because I know that I did everything that I was supposed to do. And I know that I did my job well. And today I can say that I felt proud because he's being put on the right side of my mother. And that's why I have these balloons because they didn't never want to celebrate Valentine's Day. They used to fuss and fight. That's, I ain't going to lie. Every, every year I said, y'all still together. So that's all they did. But today, as they were getting ready to go, to go down, I told them, I said, okay, y'all about to have a Valentine's Day today, aren't you? You ain't got no choice. So go on down in there and y'all have y'all honeymoon. So what I meant to say is trust God when you're going through something like that, because that was like a freight train to hit me. Trust me. You go to Florida, your dad is fine, you come back. Yeah, it was a freight train that hit me. And when, when I say it knocked me down, it knocked me down. But I knew I had to get up and I had to fight. I couldn't stop because I had to help my daddy get to his final place. And I feel great that he did. And that's why I can feel relief because I'm no longer tired from fighting because this was a hard fight. These two years were not easy by any means. I go out those doors, I'm smiling and laughing, coming here, I'm crying and proof. But now my king rests and I have so much peace in my heart. And I thank all of y'all I, I think, oh my gosh, the love that I have gotten. I, I can't even go through all of the messages. My phone calls just ring and ring and ring. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart just for loving my dad the way that you do. And thank you for loving me that way too. And okay, that's all. I'm not going to talk to y'all all night. <laughs> no, 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 you good. You good. That was a tremendous.